Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider. How are we all doing today? Today is going to be a very exciting, I've got my uh, my tea here as well, it's going to be a very exciting tutorial I think. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this one actually. It's making something, it's a, a design that I made myself actually. So I'm, I'm quite proud of it and I'm really looking forward to bringing it to you all. It's essentially something that I thought it's the perfect time to do it now. Now that we're, you know, into October, it's coming up to that sort of transition period in terms of the seasons where it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, that sort of applies. So if you're in the north, it's coming into autumn. If you go if you're in the southern hemisphere, it's coming into spring. So that's the perfect time to be wearing lightweight scarves. So that's why the plan for today, I'm going to be showing you how to make this fantastic little crystal scarf ring. There you can see my ultra sparkly. You can see how sparkly those crystals are, can't you? Uh, that's the plan for today. I'm going to be doing this in two parts. So because it's quite a, an involved little tutorial that uh, I'll be doing, uh, I've done it so that I will be doing the the sort of showing you how to make this little crystal section at the front. I'm going to show you how to do the little rings here at the side as well. Um, and then my plan for tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to assemble all of your parts into your beautiful crystal beaded scarf ring. Uh, so yeah, I'll just show you them in action as it were, because I've got a scarf just here uh, with the, the gorgeous purple colorway. Uh, this one, I think the Rivoli on this one is absolutely spectacular. It's not surprising that this one is our most popular color because look at that Rivoli. It's 20 mil, by the way, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, lots and lots of people are commenting in as well. So let me just do a few hellos and then I'll show you how this little bad boy works. Uh, so we've got Chris is here, uh, Karen is on, hi Karen, um, Colleen Cruz, uh, she's in Australia, thanks for watching, Ruti in Israel is here, we've got Kelly McCoy as always, um, Monica is here, Leslie Starr, it's very wet in Hertfordshire, yes, it's awful here as well in Cheltenham, not the most pleasant weather, um, we've got Karen here, um, Seema, thanks for joining, Sue's here, Sheesh, uh, lots and lots of people. Um, who's new? Maxine has just joined in. I best be on my best behavior if, if Maxine's watching or I'll be in trouble. Uh, we've also got Evelyn as well. Uh, Karen Hankerson, hello to you. Um, we've got Elaine. Lots and lots of people. Paola, who I think is in Rome, if I remember. Uh, Rachel Bailey, Donna, uh, Betty, Jackie. Lots and lots of people joining in. So, let me show you how this little fellow works. So as you can see, it's got a lovely big crystal in the center. These are the three different colors, by the way. So the, the turquoise, the blue, and then this uh, purpley, pinky purpley sunset color I really like as well. Uh, but yeah, so essentially you've got your big blingy crystal right in the center that will sit at the base of your, your neck there. And then you've got three little holes. So one at the top and then two on the other side as well. So there, see, there you go. One, two, three. So the way that you wear these little scarves, I'll show you the first one. Option number one, yes, I'm going to be modeling the scarves. So I might as well give myself space to, to stand up. Uh, let's see. So essentially, if you've got your scarf, you can put one end in this side, one end in the other side, and then both little tail pieces come out the bottom. And then when you wear it, you can just pop the loop over your head, aren't I dashing? Uh, and then you can choose where you want it to sit. If you want it to sit up really high, you just sit it up there. If you want it to sit a bit lower, you could just pop it there. And it'll secure your little scarf oops, into place. That's way number one that you can watch it. Uh, watch it, wear it. Um, Colleen says, my friend Leanne is here as well, saying hi to the TV. Hi, Leanne. Thanks for watching. Uh, but yeah, so I'll show you the other way. So the other way to wear it, I'll just slide that off now, is if you put both ends into the one hole, if I can see what's going on with my scarf here. Um, so both into the top hole, like so. And then 
you take one side I should have done this actually I'm gonna do it one side at a time make life a bit easier for me so in the top on one way and out this side and then in the top with the other one and out the other side there we go so one out this way and then when you go to wear it both are inside the top hole oops and then when you pull it up you've got two sides which this works really well as well for doing a sarong if you if you uh, want to imagine me wearing a sarong right now on a beach uh, <laughs> but yeah that's uh, those are the two different ways that you can wear it but also as a sarong as I said if you've got one you could sort of tie it at the back of your neck uh, the two corners and then have a lovely sarong as well which if I just show you hopefully I might have a picture I don't know I don't know I'll have a look I'll find a picture for you later um, as always guys please um, like this video share don't forget to set a reminder for tomorrow's video as well because this is just part one you don't want to miss part two um, all of that is coming um, Colleen says oh I can imagine that's wrong don't you worry uh, I, I can imagine it too. I, I would gladly put on a sarong and wear it if I could be somewhere sunny and warm and happy and beautiful on a beach right now. You know, might look a bit weird, but it's it'd be worth it to be there. I've got my cup of tea, of course, so get yours if you're uh, ready to do some beading. Now, um, I will just pop on the bottom of the screen here the materials I'll be using. Um, let's see. Oh, and that will pop it to the... the. Uh, I'll do that in a second, actually. Um, but yes, just real quickly, I'll just tell you, if you missed um, last week, I did the Triangle Beads uh, tutorial. So working with Checkmate Triangles. So if you missed that, that was last Friday. So chuck that one on and watch that if you want to learn how to use Checkmate Triangle Beads. The kit for that one is is still on sale at the minute but that sale ends tomorrow no sunday night so if you want to get that one there's three gorgeous colorways that's what the purple looks like each one of these kits makes 11 projects by the way and has a lot of designs in the project book um that's the blue colorway there's also the gold colorway but as i said you'll make up to about 15 projects from that one i think uh it does make a lot it does make a lot and if you get all three you save 20 pounds so that is the checkmate triangles tutorial um then also if you watched uh, a bit more topical this one um jermaine did a tutorial on saturday night which because we were somewhat inspired by so many people on social media talking about the um ruth bader ginsburg collar we decided that we would show you a little tutorial um this picture on screen is our constellation necklace which is great for sort of learning the basic sort of techniques you can watch that video on the bead spider uh website by the way or youtube or facebook um the constellation necklace will teach you the sort of the basic tutorial uh, it comes in three colorways so those are the three different colorways there the blue the the black with rainbow and then the the beautiful purple color as well um, all of those are there and um, uh, where am I one second I've just lost myself for a second there we go uh, yeah all of those are there and available and ready you can get that but also if you order that um, a constellation kit or you buy the pattern for making the constellation uh, we will also give you the Ruth Bader Ginsburg inspired collar pattern tutorial so if I just pop that on the screen that is this gorgeous design so Jermaine's finished making it uh, that beautiful collar I do have it here in front of me but you can see the the, the little crystals there that um, little pattern add-on you will get for free between now and Sunday so um, if you want to make that one that is definitely worth uh, grabbing that and then finally I'll just show you what's happening today the three different colorways so you can see them real quick so this is the blue sarong this is what today and tomorrow's tutorial are the blue sarong is there we also have 
the um, that really lovely turquoisey color that goes with quite a few different fun different um, things there. That is the 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 purple color, which currently that's it on a sarong. That's why you can see it's quite thin at the top uh, at the top and then goes out nice and big. So I'll try and find that picture so that you can see that one. Um, <coughs> but yeah, three colors. If you want to get all three, you save 20%. So big, big savings if you buy all three of those little um, kits together. And I'll just show you very, very quickly. Andrew filmed, uh, my father Andrew, filmed something really, really nice. So I thought I would just show you guys really quick his handiwork um, of what the three different little kits look like. You can see how sparkly those Rivoli's are. Um, but yeah, that is what is going to be on today's tutorial um but yeah so i'm really excited for that one what do you guys think of it um so far you know comment in let me know what is your favorite colorway thus far uh before before i've made anything or anything uh let me know um vivian says love that white collar a definite must have well uh, as I said, it's a free pattern when you get any of our Constellation kits or if you get our um, our Constellation necklace pattern. So either option, uh, you'll get that included for free. Uh, yeah, so um, I've decided today, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more prepared than usual. Let's take a little look at my table here. Uh, I'm a little more prepared than usual because it's a, a two-part tutorial and I'm really excited for this one and I want it all to go super duper smoothly. I've got everything prepped and ready well in advance so that um, we can make this relatively snappy tutorial actually. Oh, wait a minute. Let's pop me in the, in the corner there, shall we? Ready? Here I am. Uh, but yeah, so... Uh, yeah, let's let's get started. I've 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 done it. I'll I'll, I'll explain exactly what I'm going to do. So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do is make this little. Um, ooh, one second. I need to get my focus. I think is that going to focus automatically? No, sorry. There we go. Uh, so um, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how we make this Rivoli piece in the center. And I'm also going to show you how to make one of these rings. I'm going to do both kind of at the same time because the techniques are very, very similar. So you will see, but I'm going to guide you through the entire step of the way. By the way, if you um, just want to get the pattern, we do have that available for sale on its own as well. Um, so it will show you the entire process. Um, so even if you if you if you order a kit, you get the pattern. So don't worry about that. But if you don't want to get a kit, you can buy the pattern. Um, just check out the link up there in the description. Uh, the kit makes two. Yes, Jermaine's just uh, reminded me. I've just seen it. Each kit makes two sarong rings. So if you get all three, you'll actually have enough to make six sarong rings. So you can make lots of presents for people. Uh, but yes. So, um, I've, I'm doing something a bit different on this one. I'm not actually demonstrating one of the, the colours of the demo pieces. I'm mixing two of them so that they contrast a little bit more and you can really see what I'm doing. I've got my cup of tea. It's lovely and cold today. Kelly says the sound is a lot better today than it was last week. It's very clear. Well, that's because I've got a brand new microphone. Uh, you know, you were saying that we've, we've got a little bit of an issue with the sound, so I went and uh, did my research, and now I've got a fantastic microphone. So if that's why I sound great, that's why. If you can hear me better than ever, that's why. Um, but yeah, so let's get started on our tutorial, shall we? Right. So first things first, uh, I'll pop, as I always do, my instructions up on the page. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get out, this is a very, very crucial step, really. I'm going to pick up 54 little um, Delica beads. Hi to Daphne, by the way, how are you? Um, and Sarah, good morning. Um, yeah, so 54 little Delica beads that I need to pick up. Uh, it's very, very important that you do not miscount on this one. So this might be a little bit less entertaining bit of footage right now because I'm going to make sure that... Wait a minute, let me just zoom in. I pre-counted my 54 beads and I'm going to make absolute sure 
that I've got them all. As I said, I am going to demonstrate with these two colors just here because uh, the contrast is a little bit better. So if I just pop the materials list on the bottom, oh, it's going to make me disappear, but that's okay. I'm using a 20 mil crystal Rivoli and then, which I'll show you what they look like. These are the three different colorways that we have currently. Uh, I will get we're hoping to get more colors soon, but at the moment we do only have these three colors, which they look gorgeous, I think. Uh, really, really bright, beautiful colors um, of those ones. Uh, those are the three 20 mil Rivoli's. And then as I said, I've got Spidalon beading thread as always. Uh, I've got size 15s and, si and Delicas size 11 Delicas as well. Um, Sue says, Christmas presents for all my friends and family, I think. Um, uh, so, yes, I'm going to, I've counted them out, but I'm going to pick up, I'm starting with Delicas in this particular instance, because uh, that is what you need. So you can see here, here's one I've made in advance. So see that little purple section? That's with the Delica beads. So that's what I'm going to do first. The ring, on the other hand, would use 15. So I will sort of explain in a second. But first, let me just pick up my 54 beads. I've counted them out. It's extremely important, though, that you get this number correct. Because otherwise, you're going to have a little bit of a problem later down the road. It's extremely important that you get the accurate 54. So I'm just going to thread them all on. Uh, real quick, I've just got them over here in the corner. And threading them on nice and quickly. Uh, but make sure it's very important that you do get all 54 on the thread. Don't get 53, don't get 55, because you won't have the right amount uh, and it will not work. So this is very, very important information right there. Get all 54. So I'm just threading them on. I wanted to do it in advance, but I was in a bit of a rush. Uh, thankfully, though, this demonstration, I've got lots and lots of things prepped already, so we won't have to worry too much about things being a bit slow. I'm going to be able to get through all of this, hopefully, in about maybe an hour and a quarter is my estimations. We'll see how that goes. So we'll see if I'm finished in about an hour from now. Let's see. So I'm just threading on my beads. This is the task I wanted to do beforehand, but I was in a bit of a rush, so it didn't happen. Uh, let me just get a few more. Oh, uh, I'll put myself back up in the corner so that you can see me because otherwise it's a bit boring footage just looking at a at a tray, isn't it? Bead trays. Um, okay. Uh, Karen is chatting away. Lots of people chatting away in YouTube, it seems. Uh, having a little conversation with each other. I always like to see that. Um, I love it when everybody... It's a, a, our little bead community that, that we're building here at Bead Spider. Um, it's like a nice little crafty family almost. Um, but yeah, so I've almost got my beads all threaded on, almost all 54 of them, which takes a little bit of time, but it's important. So essentially 54, the reason it's 54 beads, it's kind of, because as I said, this is this is my own design that I've sort of come up with, my sort of branching out into the world of sort of complex bead design, I guess, is um, the plan is uh, that it's a little bit more advanced, but it's quite a bit of fun. Oh no, I've got one random bead here. This this worries me slightly. I better just count real quick to make sure I've got 54, because otherwise it's a big, big, big fat poo. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54. Perfect. All 54 beads. Very, very important. Um, hi, Kathy from Pennsylvania. Thanks for joining. Um, so, great. Now that I've got everything prepped and ready, what I will do, uh, I'll just pop my beads ever so slightly out the way. I'm going to make my ring of 54 little beads just here. So the way I'm going to do that, if I just pop the diagram back up on the screen, you can see at the top there, I go through two beads. So not just one, I find that if you go through two beads when you have to do circular peyote, which is what we're about to be doing, 
if you go through two beads, you don't have any problems with the knot, trying to thread through a knot. So it just makes the process much, much easier when you go through two beads instead of one. So let's just zoom me in a little bit more, get in a bit tighter focus, and let's begin, shall we? So, uh, as I said, I've got them all on a string just here. You need about a meter, a meter and a half of thread. Um, again, you want to use a good quality thread because you do, are doing circular peyote, so you can sort of get tangled and round and round and whatnot a bit, but the great thing is that it's um, if you've got spider on, you don't have to wax it, but you can always use like a bit of thread conditioning wax as well if you want to. So, uh, morning to Nancy uh, as well. Oh, by the way, I should mention, um, don't forget that if you want to get featured on the show, I will show it later in the show. If you want to be on the show, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and you will be able to uh, send your pictures in and if I can get them featured today, we'll see. But if not, I'll get them hopefully shown tomorrow on part two of this video. So do uh, do please do that. And then if you check out the description, if you're on YouTube, it's, it's down there. If you're on Facebook, it's, it's up there. Uh, there's a link that has that little piece of information live at Bead Spider. And you can just copy and paste that. Um, good morning to Charlotte. Hi to Leela. She says, hi, Matthew. Um, lots and lots of people joining. So, okay. Now let's let's do some solid uh, some solid demonstrating. Now I'll just pop the instruction up into the corner so you can see it. There's my nice little ring there, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to just use my tail thread here and create a nice little knot so that this stays nice and um, uh, nice and straight. Um, Sheesh says the trays work great. One of those. Uh, for, for picking up your products. Let me show you. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how these are because I see quite a few of you are, are sort of chatting about them. So just say you've got your beads on the bead mat. You can take your little bead sort tray triangle, which we sell them on our website. You get two for a pound or something. So they're really inexpensive. But essentially what you do, you take your triangle, you take it on your bead mat, and then you just scoop them all up. Ta-da! And then you can put your beads away. So how, how handy are those? Aren't they good? Anyway, so, demonstration time, as promised. Let's get into the full swing. I'm going to tie a little knot in this to keep it secure. I will do, I think it's called a blanket stitch, uh, just here. So if you just open this little knot up a little, you can see it doesn't matter if it's a bit loose at the beginning. So there's no beads. This is where I'm coming out of. So I'll take it under here. This is the tail thread. I'll go underneath there and then up and through, and that will sort of create the first part of my little knot, and then I'll just go through this little loop I've created, oops, one second, one more time, so I'm coming above here, so I need to go under there and back up again, and that will sort of give me like a surgeon's knot almost, and then as I pull them tight, it should hopefully, whoops, try not to get it all twisted, create a nice little ring for me. And pull, pull, pull. There you go. And there's a nice little ring with a knot in it. So nice and firm. Charlotte says, absolutely love those trays. They are great for sorting, counting, and keeping the beads from rolling around. I love them. And so do I. And that's why I sit all my beads in them all the time. Um, so, now that you've got this, what we're going to do essentially is called circular peyote. So I'll just grab myself a few of my Delica beads, I'll just pop them here, and I'll pop it into right-handed view. I'll do a couple of beads and then I'll pop it into right-handed view. So if you've never done um, circular peyote before, so I've, I've got it in left-handed view briefly, but I'll put it into right-handed view in just a second. So, uh, yeah. With my, my working thread, so here's my needle, the way that you do the circular peyote, if we pick up the next instruction, I'll just show it really quickly. Essentially, we're going to be adding in an extra bead all the way around the, um, the loop. So in each gap, every second bead, we add in one bead extra. So I'll just show that really quickly. We'll zoom in a little bit more as well. 
There we go. And let's get beading. So, circular peyote. You pick up one bead. You can see my thread is coming out of this little bead just here. So I'm going to skip this first bead just here and then go through the second bead. So if I just hold it nice and steady, miss the first bead, go through that second bead. Oops. There we go. So this, you see that one? Missing the first bead, through the second bead, pull, 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 all the way, nice and tight, and you'll see that it, when it comes nice and tight, it sits beside the bead below. So that's the first little step in circular peyote. We'll make sure everything is nice and tight by pulling the tail and that opposite each other. I'll pick up one more bead. And then again, we do exactly the same thing again. So with my thread coming out of this little bead just here, I'm going to skip that first one and go into the second bead. Not the first, the second bead. So I'll just pop my needle through there so that you can see that. So there, there we go. I've, no, I went one bead too many. There you go, I wasn't looking closely enough. I'm coming, no I didn't, I did go through the right one. I'm coming out of this bead, I'm skipping this bead, and then I'm going through this next little bead just here. There we go. So see that? Skipped one and I'll go through that, pull that nice and tight. Um, good morning from Lynchburg, Virginia. Will you please do a video on a bead netted scarf? Do you know what, Gwyn? Uh, that's in the cards. That is definitely something that we're planning. We've seen lots of people doing them on social media, and we're considering doing one of those too. Um, but yeah, so again, you just work around the circle. So I'm not going to do too many because luckily I've got them made in advance. Uh, so this is... Uh, the first piece, and as I said to you, this is making that outer ring of our little rivoli piece just here. So see that? The delicas just here, they're going to be the outer ring of this piece. So I'll pick up a bead, I'll skip the next one, through that next bead there, having skipped the one that I'm exiting, uh, the one after, sorry, pull it nice and tight, and... Get that nice and tight. How many of you have done circular peyote before? Because circular peyote essentially is the main premise of everything that we're going to be doing today in today's tutorial, using it in sort of interesting and different ways just to sort of create those interesting effects. So you can see it's sort of creating this little ladder of peyote stitch. So as we go around, we'll continue, 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 skip a bead through the next one, just the one, all the way. And then that's through the next. Do it again. I'll just do a couple more and then we'll jump forward because you get the idea. Pretty much we want to be at the end of this little step here. Um, Sue Devney says, sounds good. I haven't seen one about the netted scarves. Well, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that we're, we're looking at doing a little bonus video. Like the way how Jermaine did her... her um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar because that one's really popular. We're thinking about doing that too. Um, Rachel Bailey, I've done circular peyote. Very good. Who else has? Um, and then Purple Penny, the original. I had to buy extra strong reading glasses to do this with. The size 15 beads from a fortnight ago. Ah. Um, so yes, here we go. Pop that through there. And then skip the bead. And then I'll pop it into right-handed view and I'll do a couple of beads as well so that you can see it in right-handed view too. So there we go. Pull that nice and tight. Um, she says, I have. Your instructions are so easy to follow. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, let's pop it into right-handed view. Ready? And bing! I'm right-handed all of a sudden. Magic. Um, Colleen says, I've watched some tutorials, but I haven't done it yet. Well, today you're watching another tutorial, so hopefully this one will be nice and clear for you. So as I said, you just go... Skip the next bead and through the one below. So you can see that. Skip the first one and into the second. Pull nice and tight. And we continue around all the way, just exactly the same as that, until we get to the very, very end. So one, a couple more, and then I'll, I'll jump ahead 
to the next part of our tutorial. So you can see it creates this sort of little peyote stitch ring that we're creating around here. And I'll just get rid of my excess Delica beads now. And what I'll do, I'm going to jump ahead now and show you... Oh, by the way, I just realized it's here on the desk. Um, that Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar, I have it just here on the table to show you all uh, so that you can see Jermaine's handiwork on that finished design because I think she's done a gorgeous job of it. It looks absolutely spectacular, um, which if I just zoom out real quick. There we go. There's Jermaine's... Oh, no, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. Keep zooming out. Oop, too far. You can see everything now. Uh... There we are. So there you go. You can see there's that gorgeous Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar that Jermaine made. It sits beautifully. And funnily enough, following the inspiration of one commenter during the tutorial, I can't remember who it was exactly, we've also put little crystals. Oh, I need to get a bit more focus. Wait. Pop it back into left-handed view for a second. There we go. So see that? We put teeny-weeny little crystals in the gaps, just so it sits a little bit neater around the ring. But then you can see, uh, if it'll focus for me, those little crystals, they catch the light and really sparkle um, just there. But yeah, if you want to if you wanna make this one, don't forget you can get that um, high to K, by the way. Uh, yeah, you can get this tutorial for free if you get our Constellation kit or if you buy the Constellation... Um, um, like written instructions, you'll also get the the Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, for free as well. So they, they they do come bundled together as a little little bundle. Great. So as I said, I've just sort of been doing some some peyote there, and now let's just jump ahead, pop this out of the way, and I'll show you. This is ever so slightly different. So this is why I'm saying I'm doing both the ring, but also the um. The Rivoli, I'm sort of tutoring you them both at the same time. So if I just zoom in a bit, you saw when I did it with the Delicas, this one, it's exactly the same, but this is with the size 15 beads. The little, um, so I'll just go to the next little diagram here. Uh, so yeah, when you're doing your little beaded rings, which I'll just pop them both on the screen here. Wait a second. So yeah. This one, the outer row, is with the Delicas. For the ring here, it's actually the inner row that we're doing. So that starts with size 15 beads. So that's why what I'm going to do is essentially it's exactly the same start, but then in the end, there's a one minor divergence. So I'm going to show you the ring because I thought they're a little bit more interesting, a bit more different. Um, wow. Wow. Andrest says, Hi Matthew from Transylvania in Romania. I've been there, you know. Um, did you know this scarf ring would work with an 18mm crystal? Not quite. It won't quite fit inside here, and the bead dimensions don't quite work. I wanted to try it with an 18, but it doesn't quite fit. Um, it's a little bit too, too small, um, so that's why the 20 mils essentially is what you... Uh, you have to use. Jermaine is watching. She says she's watching on her phone. Uh, Mum's just off uh, at the minute. She's not at home, so uh, she's she's watching me on her phone as well. Um, by the way, that's interesting. How many people are watching on phones? How many are watching on... It's like sort of useful information for me. I'd love to know how many of you watch on your phone? How many of you watch on... Um, like tablet? How many have you on the desktop? Just let me know. Comment in and tell me which one uh, which way you're watching. I, I'm, I'm interested to know how most people watch. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I'll just finish off and then I can show you how you step up when it comes to your, your uh, circular peyote. So I just need one little size 15 bead, which is this itty bitty weeny little fella just here. By the way, the needles that we give you in the kit, um, they're extra f uh, they're extra fine needles so that because delicate uh, size 15 beads have quite small holes, we give you really, really small um, needles as well. You can use a regular needle most likely, but we've given you an extra fine one just to make sure you can do it. Uh, lots of people are watching on their phones. Lots of people watching on their phones. Um, Rachel's on a laptop, tablet, um, 
watching on laptop. So funnily enough, everyone on Facebook's on their phone almost, and then over on YouTube, most people are on uh, iPads and tablets and things. Okay, so let's step up, shall we? So you can see I'm down to the last three beads. I need to skip this one and then go into this little bead just here, and then I'm going to do what is called stepping up. So I'll just pass firstly into this little bead. Have I got it in right-handed view? Yes, good. So um, pop it into just this last little bead just here. So there you go. You can see I've gone into that last little bead before my first little peyote stitch. I'll pull this nice and tight, get it nice and firm, and then you'll see, hopefully, if I've gone through the right bead there, yes I have, good. So now it should, in theory, let me just pull my threads nice and tight, create a nice little ring of beads just there. Oh, it's a bit twisted. Where's my tail thread? Get it out of the way. Yeah, little tail thread. It's getting in my way. There we go. Just pop it underneath, through and under. So there. Okay, so you can see now I've got a nice little ring all the way of beads. I'm coming out of this bead in between before my first little step up. So what I'm going to do is just take my little thread and go stepping up through the first little bead I added in this step. So you can see it will just pop. Right? Did I just go through the right bead or did I go through the wrong bead? I think I just went through the wrong bead. Yes, I did. Aren't I silly? I am having a nightmare with this little first starting piece. Let's just undo that little one there. Yes, I've gone through the wrong way, have I? No, no, I haven't. I have done it right. Good. So I'll just go through there. What's going on right now? Oh, it's this piece. There we go. My tail thread's getting in the way. So anyway, what we do, once we've got it and we've stepped up... No, I will go back through that, I think. It's gone through it in the wrong direction somehow. Here we go. Did I go the wrong way with my thread, maybe? Yes, I did. Ah, oh, I'm silly. Right, there we go. So make sure you continue going around the circle in the same direction. Don't magically just go back through the bead that you added. Good morning to Tina, by the way. Um... Colleen says, I comment on my phone, but I make the whole house watch on TV. I'm trying to convert you to beaters. Well, I'm, uh, I'm doing my best to convert them. I'm having a go, uh, Colleen. I hope, they're, I hope they're, you know, slowly but surely being converted. Um, but there we go. So, okay, good. Now I can continue on. I'm coming out of this side of the bead. So to step up, I need to go through the next bead around, the very first one I added, just the outer of the two. Pull that tight, and now I'm in position with my thread coming out just here in this little gap. That's where I need to start adding the next row of beads. So it's ready to start doing that. So for, if I just show you the um, diagram real quickly, I'm, I've, I've added my ring of 15s, because essentially I started with a ring of 15s, 54 of them, so I've done one of Delica's and I've got one of size 15's. I'm going to demonstrate with the 15's and we'll come back to it. Um, so there we go, there's the 15's there. And then what I'll do, I'm going to start adding more Delica beads. So if at this point, I've this is where I'm at right now. And so what I need to do one by one, add Delica's into the gaps between all of those little um, pieces right there. So if we have a look, see how it's like little, almost like a little cog with, with spaces between. I've got to pull my little delicas back out again. And I'm going to start filling up these gaps in the same way, one by one, with peyote stitch. So I'll go through the first up bead, pull that nice and tight. The um, next one, so see, I've gone through that bead. I'll skip this down bead here, and then I'm going to go through the next up bead, which is just there. So see that one? I'll get my thread out the way. And you know what? Let's zoom in a little bit more. Because I know you guys like it when my tutorials are super duper close. So I'll make it as close as I can. And I'll try not to move so I stay in shot. So there we go. Coming out of this bead. Coming out of here. Jumping across. Missing the down bead. And next through the next up. So see that? Just through there. Pull that nice and tight. And then you'll see, fills the gap with the next Delica. So 
So I'll just rotate it a little bit more around, pick up the next bead, and again I'll go through the next gap and thread all the way up through that little gap just there and pull, 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 and ooh, am I out of shot? Yes, I am. There we go. There, okay. I need to keep my hand right here. Let's put my delicas over here so that I can see them. There we go. There we go. Now I can keep my hand steady. So pick up a delica, go through the next little gap, pull that nice and tight. It's good to have a nice firm tension. It doesn't need to be with your ring pieces. You want to have a looser tension. With your big crystal rivoli bit, you want to have a nice firm tension. Sorry, sorry about going off screen there. I can see a few of you have said, be careful. Um, yes, Delica beads are made by Mayuki. Um, Bernadette is replying to Evelyn. What brand of 15s am I using? These are Toho size 15 beads. Um, and then the my then my Yuki size 11 delicas. Uh, so the delicas are 15 uh, are my Yuki, but the the 15s are Toho. Um, just because Toho beads sort of have that slightly square shape about them, which works really well for Pyote stitch, um, rather than my Yuki size 15 seed beads. Plus the the Tohos um, are a little bit less less expensive, I suppose, in general, for for than delicas. So you can use that seed bead because they're almost kind of the same. So we'll just go around the circle as you can see. Um, Vivian has just commented in. She says, I love the thread Matthew uses in the kits over my old staple fire line. Um, I can pull it ever so taut and it stays tight. It's a great thread. Do you know what? I absolutely love using Spidalon thread as well um, because it's a bonded monofilament. Um, it's really, really high quality. Um, Vivian's, uh, no, Charlotte is asked, good to know, is it sold on the Bead Spider website? Yes, if you search for Spiderlon, so Spider L-O-N, um, you will find it. We just got some new colors in about a week or two ago. I need to have a sip of my tea, by the way, or it's going to go cold. Um, Bernadette, no, no, no. Um, Bernadette, these aren't Delicas. These are Toho seed beads, but funnily enough, the Toho 15 seed beads are really square and they look like Delicas, but they're actually seed beads. So these are Toho seed beads, um, which is why they look like Delicas, but they are in fact seed beads. Uh, so I'm just continuing around and then you sort of get the gist. I will continue on because, like I said, I've been very, very prepared and I will, and I've got everything ready to sort of just show you this process a lot, lot quicker. So as you do, you just continue all the way around till you get to the very, very end. Do you know what? I will finish this particular ring and then I'm going to jump ahead. Uh, so I'll finish this one. You can see it does come together quite quickly once you get going. Pull, pull, pull through the next bead. Um, yes, uh, the spider on thread, it does come in. I think there's 17 colors we've got now. So that's quite good. Um, for that one but the nice thing is because it's a good quality uh, thread and you can pull it nice and tight you almost never see it in your beadwork so that's a great thing when you've got a good tension and a good quality thread a lot like what they say about t uh, the directing and editing of films when a movie is edited well you never notice it and the thread is exactly the same so when you've got a good quality thread the tension will be tight and you won't see it you won't know it and um, that it's there and you'll be able to just bead like I am and it will hold its tension. So you can see how nice and firm these beads have stayed uh, really, really easily. And I'm literally just doing circular peyote, which tends to get a little bit loose. Um, so let's just keep going. By the way, if it gets a little bit wiggly, wonky and stuff, don't worry about it. That's perfectly fine. We, we almost kind of want that. So this, what I'm making at the minute, is one of the little beaded rings. So that that ring of 15s, that's going to become the inside, and I'm adding my outer rows now. So what we do now, just continue around. I'll do a few more, and I'll get myself all the way around to the very, very end, and then we can sort of have a look at the next step, which is stepping up again. So through there. Staying in shot, am I? Yes. Um... Yep, Charlotte says, that's usually the problem I have with wild line, uh, wild line and fire line. 
uh, is, is that it comes a bit looser. Well, that never happens with this because the quality of the thread is, is what sort of prevents it. So uh, this is the stepping up process. I'll just show that real quickly. Um, yeah, so S-Lon and G-Lon are a little, or, or C-Lon I think maybe you mean, are usually too slippery and make projects longer to finish. This is different. It's not S-Lon and it's not C-Lon. This is bonded nylon. So because it's bonded, it never frays as well. It's a shame. There's a, a lady who's usually here, uh, Colleen Rowe. She sends lots of pictures. Um, she usually uh, comments in. She's, I think she's our biggest advocate when it comes to Spidalon thread. Um, she, she could tell you all about it because she does a last little up bead there. And then to step up, we go through that first Delica that we added at the beginning of this row. So here we go, through that last Delica, pull that nice and tight, and then we can start on our next row, which if I just show you the diagram here, I'm just adding, I'm filling in the gaps with more Delica beads. You're not going to have to watch me go through the whole process of doing of that. Um, but there we go. Uh, here we go. Yes. So, um, oh yeah, it's good for hanging the washing. I wonder if I've got that picture still here. Let me have a look. I'll see if I do. I might have, you know, funnily enough, I I did do once. I hung, I used it as a, as a washing line because it's so strong. No, I don't have the picture. Oh well, I'll have to go looking for it sometime. But anyway, um, I'll just pop the materials on the bottom again so you can see exactly. Uh, what I'm using. By the way, if you want to watch part two when I assemble this, there's a link up in the description about um, subscribing for more tutorials and um, more tutorials and more patterns and things because we do give away patterns, um, which, wait a second, I'll just go through this bead just here. So I'm just going to show you a couple of beads of adding, filling it up. So that's our next row that we're adding of beads there. Um, yeah, if you want to subscribe where it says subscribe for more tutorials and patterns, you'll get an email just before we go live um, tomorrow for when I do the assembly. We I send out an email before I do all of my live tutorials just about 15 minutes before, which is how most of you get here, I think. Um, so if you're new, which I don't know, if anyone's new, let me know. Um, uh, that's a great way to sort of be in the loop of knowing what's coming, when it's coming, um, and all of that. But there, you can see I'm sort of just adding my next row of Delica beads just here, exactly like that. And if you continue around, you step up, we're going to do, if I just show you, I'll just pop this little piece out of the way because I'm finished with it now. Um, here we go. And then we come along. Hopefully it's this one. No, it's not. It's this one. Yes. And essentially what we do, we need to continue until we've done a third row. So essentially we go, we started with 15s and we're working out with Delicas until we've done three rows of Delica beads there. So I'm pretty much at that point now. So there you go. You didn't have to watch any of that. Thank goodness. You can see it's sort of starting to roll a little bit into a cone shape. That's perfectly fine. That's pretty much what we want. Um, that's exactly what we want. So if I just get this needle out of the way, if I just show you essentially what we'll do now, once you're getting to the end, I'll just show you how we add on that last bead of this step here. Oh, you might want to see my face again, I guess. Um, where am I? Here I am. Great. Uh, so if you just have a little look here, I'll show you how you finish that third row. So we just pick up one more Delica and exactly the same. You just go through here, but instead of stepping up this time, so you can see I've got three complete rows now. Put it there. How does that look? Three complete rows. Instead of stepping up this time, what we're going to do is weave into the center of our little piece just here. So if I put the instructions up nice and big, I'm going to take my thread. It's coming out on the very, very edge there pretty much. And I'm going to weave down, 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 down all the way until I come back to my row of size 15 beads. So I need to come back into the center of my ring. Um, let's just pop the instruction up there into the corner so you can sort of see what I'm doing. 
And then what I'm going to do, I'll show you it on the outside, because it doesn't matter if you're on the outside or the inside, it doesn't matter. But anyway, get my tail thread out of the way. And then with this just here, you can see I'll go through this bead just so that it looks exactly the same as the diagram. So I'm coming from this little outermost bead, and what I'll do is just one by one weave through the beads. Ooh, I'll make sure I stay nicely in the screen. I'll hold my thread out the way even. There we go. So I'll go through this bead, first of all. Pull that tight. Then I'll go through the next bead that's to the left in front of it, which is this one here. Pull that nice and tight as well. Get my tail thread out the way. Keep my thread out the way. Then again, I'll move forward and through the next size 15 bead. So through that bead there. Um, so Peggy asked, will an 18 mil Rivoli work? Not really, not really. Um, it doesn't quite give you the right size when it comes to beads. 20 mils work much, much, much better. 18s, you can have a go and try and fiddle with it, but usually there's quite a bit of mathematics that you need to sort of complete so that it will all work perfectly for the assembly. So you can make an 18 mil Rivoli, but when you come to assembling it, it's not really going to assemble properly. You can have a go, but yeah, the assembly process, that's where you'll struggle when if you're trying to use an 18 mil Rivoli. This is why we went and got 20 mil Rivolis. They're quite rare, um, but that's why I've gone for that. Because essentially the ring, if you noticed, it's 54 beads that I started with. I'm almost at my, my inside now. Because it's 54 beads, for the assembly to work, Essentially, you need to use um, a starting number that's divisible by six. So essentially, it's something that's divisible by three, but also divisible by um, two. So essentially, if it's divisible by three and two, it'll work. But usually, that doesn't tend to give you a number that's going to fit around a, a pendant. So that's why uh, it doesn't quite work with an 18. Because you don't need, because uh, the six beads fewer to make it so that the assembly will work is a few too few. Uh, so, okay, now that I'm in the center, I'll just show you this little piece just here. I'm going to start adding Delica beads. It's going to get a little bit crowded, but that's okay. We don't mind. It's going to look like a big higgledy piggledy mess in a minute. Because look, I'll add one row and then I'm going to add another row. So it's going to get quite full of beads but that's fine. We kind of want it to be like that. The more of a mess it is, the easier it will be. Um, uh, the more e the easier it will be to, to sort of see exactly um, when it comes into that rounded sort of ring shape. Um, Vivian says, my husband put the tutorial on our TV in the living room. So much more clarity. I'm glad that's, uh, that that's working for you there, uh, Vivian. Um, Let's see, did you say you're going to try and get more colors of 20 mil Rivoli? Yes, that is the plan. Uh, we haven't got too many. We've only got the three colors at the minute, which I'll just show them to you all very, very quickly. I'll use my fancy logo swipe because I love using that thing. Uh, but there we go. So there's three colors that we have at the moment. That's all we have at the minute um, because we sort of wanted to test them. Uh, and the quality of them came back looking amazing. So there you go, you can see they are absolutely spectacular, but I love this one, this one's my favorite. This is the one that comes with the purple, uh, but you can see it's got like a blue sheen on top of like a, a sort of a amber colored glass, but they look spectacular, don't they? Um, and then the blue is this one here, which is a nice bright blue. And then this one here, I think, is just amazing. It's got, like, blues, but also greens and stuff, and it completely changes color based on the direction you're looking. It's essentially, it's like an aqua color glass with a similar blue coating as this on the top surface. So um, that's why, that's that one. But anyway, yeah, more 20 mils coming in the future, but not yet. Uh, so now that I'm in the middle just here... Which, by the way, if you want to get some 20 mil Rivoli's, we sell them on our website. Um, you can get them if you click the link in the description for for seeing the the different um, products for today's tutorial and the kits and all of that, all the related products. It's on that page. So I'll just show you real quickly because 
uh, that makes it easiest, doesn't it? So I'll just pop it on uh, very, very quickly before I show you these little rings. Just very, very quickly. Here we go. So this is our Bead Spider homepage today. Um, here's the tutorial that I'm doing right now. If you um, click on this View Scarf Ring Related Products, uh, you can watch... Oh, there's the Ruth Bader one from last Saturday. Here is... Oh, no, I'm not even showing you. What am I doing? There we go. Here's the homepage now, finally. Uh, there is, if you want to click on this uh, button just here, this will take you to where I'm watching. This, this is today's tutorial right now. You can click play and you can start watching it. Um, otherwise, uh, here's the, the related products, but I'll show you from the homepage again. Uh, view scarf ring related products. Just click that one right there. And then there you go. You can see there's the all three there are the three different colors, so you get 20% off, no, more than 20% off. It's only 30 pounds, three for 30 pounds. Uh, I forgot, it was even better. And that makes six scarf rings, because each kit makes two. Uh, but then there you go, there's the pattern on its own, if you just want to get the pattern. There are the three different colors of the 20 mil Rivoli. And then, of course, we've got Delicas here and Toho 15s and whatnot. But you can, you can browse through and find everything um, if you want. Um, and I'll just show you very, 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 very quickly, sorry to give the interruption. I'll get back to the tutorial in just a second. If you have a look at the Ruth Bader Ginsburg tutorial, you can just click play if you if you want to watch it just here. Um, but otherwise, in the related products, if you purchase any of the kits or the pattern, which the pattern's just here, it's only $250, um, any of the kits, they are also 20% off if you buy all three. Add one to your basket. So I'll just, uh, I should have just clicked the button. Add to basket. And then if you have a look, I'll show you very, very quickly. It'll add it to the basket. And then if we go to the checkout, which you can't quite see it, it's just above here. There we go. View the basket. And then there you go. Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar add-on pattern for free. So that's if you buy any of the patterns or if you get, um, you know, the, the any all three together or if you buy just the pattern on its own, you will get this included for free. So that's on there as well. But yeah, hopefully that's some useful information for you. Uh, let's get back to, to some tutorial time, shall we? Um, now, there we go, fade back, and I'm back. So uh, let's just have a quick look at these instructions just here. Uh, so I'll show you what I'm going to do. As I said, I'm adding rows of delicas into the center. Two rows. Two rows into the center there. So two rows. <coughs> I'll just do the first, and then thankfully, as I said, I can jump ahead because i got a couple there. Um, Sherry Chapman says, that's really pretty. I'm glad you think so. Um, so let's have a sip of tea before it goes ice cold. Big mouthful there. Almost too much. Just so I can, you know, keep myself hydrated. Keep the, uh, the throat hydrated smooth so that I can talk to you all without losing my voice. Right, so I picked up a Delica. Now that we're on the inside, as I said, things will get a little bit tight, but that's okay. We kind of want that. doesn't matter too much. So you just pass through there and keep your tail thread out of the way. Pull that. And then that's going to just start adding beads into this inner gap. Same way as we did before. I'll only do a few, and then I'll move on and show you how we'll finish off this little ring piece just here. So, there we go. This is exactly the same process, pretty much, for making your, your little Rivoli ring as well. So, essentially, you do your central row, three rows on one side, and then two rows on the inside. That's pretty much exactly the same, except... With, the, with the, the ring pieces, you start with your size 15s. For your Rivoli piece, you start with your Delica beads and then swap to the other type of bead. Uh, so, I'll do a couple more and then I'll jump ahead so that we can really see what's happening and get going on the, the sort of the stitching up process. So, pull that and then one more. So you can see it's a nice contrast. Do you know, it was funny. This is the Toho 15 from the uh, the turquoise Rivoli here that you can see. This is why I didn't show you with um, 
with just the the one colorways because we haven't given you so much of a contrast in them because obviously you kind of wouldn't really be able to see during the tutorial the two different beads hence why I've sort of decided to go with the two rather than just the one and I'll just show you the purple one very very quickly as well come on now there we go and here is the, the purple color there so okay let me continue on you've seen that now uh, now let's move ahead you just continue you do your first row as I said do your first row and then do your second row of delicas and that will bring you to ouch this point just stabbed myself with a needle there oh well it happens oh caught there we go so that will bring you to this point just here so you can see on the one side i've got three rows so one two three rows on that side and then i've only got two rows of delicas on this side that's exactly where i want to be i'll just finish off these last couple of beads and then we'll get on to um the stitching it together um kelly's off to bed have a lovely sleep kelly and hopefully i'll get to see you tomorrow and i hope you're feeling a bit better she said she's got a bit of a headache um so let's just add on these two little beads so this is how you'll see it's a bit higgledy piggledy wiggly and hasn't quite fit but that's okay you just pull it tight and it will fit in there um last one so we'll just add in our last little delica bead into this gap and then we're going to step up so that we're coming out of this little bead just here this is where we want to finish off so up this delica in here and then as we said we're going to step up to the outside ring so coming out of this bead just here and then into the next one around the ring come on now there we go through there and oops got caught pull there we go and now essentially i'm in position and i'm ready to start stitching my my little ring into one single piece like this so this is this is like the most satisfying part of the entire tutorial i love when i make these um how nicely it all comes out k says does it matter what size needle you use so um the needles that you get with our spider on thread they are size 11 so pretty much i always use size 11s but with this particular kit we do also give you a pony we give you instead a pony size 12 needle so it's just that little bit finer for working with um toho beads it's it's a little bit more difficult to get threaded but you will find that when you're going through bead after bead after bead again and again and again that having that slightly finer needle uh it'll be worth it for the for 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 making it easier to go through beads multiple times with very very small holes um so the faff of threading it will be very much worth it so how we turn this into a ring i'll just show you very very quickly essentially with my thread you can see it starts at the very top um top corner there what i'll do is essentially i'm sort of stitching them together zipping them up so i'm going to with my thread coming out of the bead on the inner line i'm going to attach it to the outer row of this is where the two designs the the, the rivoli part and the ring part sort of separate so i will go through both um so yeah you can see you've got to go through that sort of inner row join it to the outer row inner row outer row inner row outer row and so on um, actually i'll pop the instruction into the corner so that we can see it uh, just here and now what i'm going to do is like i said we don't have to pick up any beads i've just got to sort of fold my two sides oh sorry i'm a bit out of shot there um, fold my two sides together so i'm coming out of this bead just here wait i'll add a i'll increase the focus there we go how good does that look so uh there we go i'm coming out of this bead here and i'm going to jump across and go through the nearest delica on the outside there so through that one like so hold it out the way then i'll go back to my inner ring 
So I'll go through this little bead just here, pull that nice and tight. And as I said, this is like the most satisfying thing in the universe. You go through that outer one again, just zigzagging back and forth like the little diagram up there in the corner. Zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. And then back to the inner row. Pull it nice and tight, which thankfully the Spidalon is very helpful at that. Back to the outer row. Then the next one on the inner row. And then the outer row. We just sort of keep going. Inner row. See that? There's the inner row again with a row of two. Then back to the outer row. You can sort of pinch it together so that it sort of becomes more rounded as we go along. And then the reason I said that this is like the most satisfying thing on the universe in the universe is you'll see when I get my finger out of the way. There you go, look at that. Just like brings it so nice and neatly together into this like single beautiful shape. And then we go through the next one. And then the next. And just keep going back and forth all the way. It's quite a quick process. Doesn't take too long. Easy enough. And then the next. And keep going. A few more. And there you can see it sort of starts coming together. You literally just keep little by little by little rolling it in so that it will be coming together. The last few beads get a little bit more stiff, but that's okay. You can literally just sort of pop it into shape. But um, yeah, you just keep sort of going as you're going and it'll it'll stitch really nicely together into a single piece. Just make sure you only go through those outer beads. Uh, wait, here, there we go. That'll make it a little easier to see, I think. And then pull it nice and tight and then that hides your thread, doesn't it? Through the next one. Concentration face. And then the next. How's that looking, everyone? What do you think? Liking my little uh, my little ring piece here? So essentially, you just keep going, and then as you get around, see how it brings that inner side into a nice ring shape curve, and then when you've finished, you will have one finished perfect little ring, which essentially this one I've weave I wove off my threads, uh, joined them. Uh, you know, one one woven into one end, my tail thread woven into the bottom, and then it just sort of got rid of them. So there's my first little ring. Now, you need to make three of these little rings. So that's exactly uh, what you need to do. So make sure if you're going to try and make the assembly tomorrow, uh, also make those little rings. Uh, there you go. You'll need three. And then if we jump ahead, I'm going to show you. This is pretty much back to... Um, the, the sort of the finished little end of how we get finished. Let me just put it back into focus on the floor table here. Get rid of this little diagram for a minute. And pick up these beads. Don't need them anymore. Put them back in there. And now essentially what I've done, this is exactly the same. So like I said, if you start by doing one side with three rows, this for doing the rivolis you start exactly the same way it's literally the exact same process you just swap the beads so in this one you start with the delicas and then you use 15s to do your extra rows as opposed to the one which i did just before which was starting with 15s and then you work with delicas so this particular one you can see just here one side i've got three beads the other side has two beads this is where we're up to so pretty much exactly the same when we stitched them all together just a minute ago. This is a little bit different. Need to just get my thread sorted. And this is the point at which we would add 
our little crystal rivoli. So you can see this is going to be the, the bottom side, the row with three already. The row where I've only got two so far, it's still loose enough that I can pop my rivoli inside. Um, you just take your 20 mil rivoli and just ease it inside there, pop it in like that. So there's the base. Oops, sorry. There's the base there. And then pop that in to the other side. And now what I'll do is I'm going to continue working around and finish this little fellow off. So if I just pick this up here, you can see I'm just about to finish this row. So when you get to this point, that's when the, the crystal will fit nice and easily, but relatively snugly, so that you won't have too much trouble with it. Um, what do you think of that fella? So it's literally exactly the same point that we were up to. Um, just pop this into the corner here. Matthew, I've said it before and I'm saying it again. Your teaching techniques are the bomb. Um, I've tried to follow those bead magazines, but never quite got there. Thanks so much for your help today and always. Um, well, no problem, Vivian. I'm glad you are um, enjoying the tutorial. I'm glad you're you're learning. And, you know, it's, that's sort of how I hope to do it. I want you guys to, to sort of have the passion for the beading and try things. Uh, that's, why, that's why I do them. But hey, if you love these tutorials, share, please, please share my videos, share them. Uh, that's the best way to sort of spread the word uh, so that I can make more content is to share, share, share. Everybody share, do it right now. <laughs> Um, so I'll just finish this little row here by going through here, but with 15s now. So through that little bead, I'm going to put it back into focus, don't worry. And then I'll step up into the inner row, and then we're ready to really lock that crystal into the center of our design here. So I'll just get my tail thread out of the way. And we're going to start adding size 15 beads. So if I just show you the instructions very, very quickly, I've done these two bits. There you go. That's finishing off your little tri uh, your little ring piece. Now, as you can see, with this little rivoli piece, we've done the two rows, and I'm this is where I'm up to. It's time to add a third row of beads. So that's essentially what I'm going to do. I want to do this one as tight, 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 firm as I possibly can. It doesn't matter too much on the first pass because you can always go through them again to get it extra firm. This is the, the perfect opportunity for using that, um, that uh, smaller needle that will come with the kit, uh, the size 12 needle, the pony size 12 needle, just because then it will be um, a lot easier to get through the beads multiple times. I'll put that in focus. It's about where I'm going to hold it. So... Now I'm going to work around the circle once more, adding this time 15s to lock that in place. So through, just work around through the first bead. Again, we're just working in circular peyote. So, whoops, sorry, went out of screen a bit there. There we go. So there's the first bead. Go through the next one. Oops, just the one, not both. There we go, so through there. Pull that nice and tight. There we go, there's the next one. And we just keep adding the beads. And as we go, it just locks your little rivoli into the center of your little beaded design. So just keep going. And I recommend between each bead that you add, put one finger on the top in the middle, one finger on the bottom, and just pull, pull, pull. Get it nice and firm. Get my thread out the way there. Kay says, I love the diagrams. They're so helpful. Well, I'm glad you like them. Um, if you if you like these diagrams, don't forget that if you buy the kit, you'll get them included with your instructions. But also, I do have the full instructions that covers the entire process from beginning to end, because there's quite a few diagrams I didn't show you as well um, that are in the um, 
the instructions, which they're for sale on our website, which you can um, have a go at making that one too. Um, also, by the way, because I know a lot of you don't have 20 mil Rivoli's, you can always, instead of, I mean, obviously the crystal is this big main feature, but you can also make scarf rings just with four rings. So instead of having a lovely big crystal, you could do it if you really wanted to, where it was just four rings, if you wanted to make a bigger size one, for example, because then you're not limited. The crystal sort of limits the size that you can make it. Um, but yeah, if you wanted to make a bigger one, uh, you can always do four rings and then stitch them together, but you know, you've got to sort of try and do that as best that you can but of course then you're missing out on this lovely big crystal which is the main feature but it will still work even if you um you don't have a 20 mil crystal you can do four rings instead um by the way are you guys sending in your pictures i am going to be showing the ones that got sent in um earlier uh i don't know if i'll be able to show today's pictures just yet but i will um i'll show them tomorrow obviously uh, if you send them in today, which is live at beadspider.co.uk, send in those pictures, send, 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 and, um, you know, we'll get them processed and shown on the show. So, uh, I'll just keep going here, you know, as you can see, just adding those little beads. And you can see that this side, it's just that little bit more, sort of just overlapping a bit more onto the center of the crystal where we've added the extra beads. Once we get all the way around, you can see it ends up very, very neat, very, very clean, and all finished. So essentially what we need to do, once we have it finished, you just weave all the way around, adding in your beads, and then I really, really recommend go through it again, right on those tightest beads. So just go through the low one, then the high one, the low one, the high one, the low one, the high one, all the way around in this sort of most outermost row so that you can get your piece really, really firm, really, really tight uh, right inside there so that it's sitting beautifully, um, just like that there. But essentially, that is everything for today, and I'm almost spot on exactly where I thought I would be. It would take me about an hour, but that's because I was nicely prepared in advance. Uh, but there, there we go. So we've got our little ring piece uh, just around here somewhere. Here it is. My finished little ring. So we need to have one crystal and three little rings, and then tomorrow I'm going to assemble it all into one single piece. So it's going to become almost the, I think it looks like a, I don't know why, but it reminds me of a unicorn, these two colors. Uh, so I'm going to be guess, I guess I'll be making like the unicorn version, but there you go. There is the, I'm going to be showing you how to stitch it all together, how to add the crystals in the joins as well. The entire process from beginning to end, I'm going to show you how to do it all. Uh, it's going to be probably a slightly more involved little Thing just there because the the assembly part I guess is the hardest part but that's what's coming tomorrow so make sure you're watching uh, for that one if you're gonna make along with me you need some four millimeter bicones uh, just here um, the you need a 20 mil Rivoli I've got Delicas and 15s and then of course uh, yeah four four mil crystals uh, ideally for just here four mil bicones that's what I'm using um, but yeah, that is, the assembly is going to be tomorrow. Let's just zoom out a tiny touch. Uh, where am I? Let's, let's put me on the screen, shall we? There we go. So yeah, that's the, um, the, actually I'll go back to the thing just here so I can show you the three colors one last time. Or better yet, I'll show you Andrew's little video that he made. Uh, here it is. Um, and there we go. So those are the three different colors that you can get. Um, it's all three for 30 pounds, so you'll make six of them for 30 pounds. Uh, usually each kit is 13, so by getting all three for 30, you save nine pounds. Essentially, you're getting one for just four pounds. You get that last set for four pounds. You will make six, though. So you see three different colors. Each one makes two. Each one makes two. So if you wanted to, you can kind of do what I've done, where you can mix two of the colors, like the 15s from the purple, 
and the uh, sorry the delicas from the purple and the 15s from one of the other colors you can mix them and match them so that's a great thing to do with if you're getting multiples you can mix and match your colors together you will get your um your instructions included everything that you will need is included all the thread all the beads absolutely everything is in there plus you get all of your instructions the needle all of it's in there everything that you would need to make two from each kit um, and then I'll just show you one last time very very quickly on the bead spider website if I can find it here um, so let's take a quick look at the website here so don't forget if you want to get that just you can either I'll show you there's a few different ways that you can do it whoops wrong button wait a second let's just go back uh, so from this home page you can either just if you want to watch the tutorial part one is in here tomorrow the I'm going to put it on after this so if you click on here the way that it's going to work part one which is the page right here where part one is I'm going to add part two above this so that you can watch part one but make sure you set a reminder on Facebook and whatnot so that you'll know when I go live or from that link up there in the description whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook so that you can subscribe for more tutorials and things because we'll email you directly to your inbox so you know exactly when it's coming uh, but yeah if we take a look at the little uh, picture just here which oh actually wait I can find it uh, if I wait I'll just show you our little kit library um, oops all kits I just come to our kits page using the menu so if you click on the little menu here and you go all kits this will take you to our kits page and I can see if I can find the the sarong rings they are here somewhere so you can see we've got a, a lot of kits here they are and then this is where you'll be able to see that picture of it as a sarong hopefully or I could just be lying completely let's have a look here here we go and this is Maxine's lovely face that you'll see in a second if I can get it to show Ta-da! See, you can wear it as a sarong as well. Isn't that fun? So if it's getting warmer, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, if you're in Australia or wherever, New Zealand, um, or near the equator, uh, you can wear it as a lovely sarong instead if you prefer. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, um, like I said, there it is. It works two different ways as a scarf. $12.95 if you want to get one. Otherwise, all three of them for just £30 make six scarves. So you save pretty much £9 that way. Um, or you can get just the pattern on its own just here that one it comes with the full book of instructions uh, it shows you how to make everything from beginning to end all the way along um, every step of the way uh, but yeah so let's take a little look shall we at the pictures that people have been sending in recently um, Elaine has said beautifully made Matthew thank you and Jan Alston says thanks again Matthew came in late today unexpected visitor uh, but we'll join you tomorrow for part two so let's take a look at the pictures just very very quickly if you want to be on the show send us your pictures be featured by sending your pictures into live at beadspider.co.uk you'll be on the show and I can show everyone your beautiful work uh, just like these people just here so Liz Kerr is first she sent us a picture in she said I followed your demonstration this one was from my triangle beads which if you haven't seen that one that was last week's tutorial last Friday which is this one just here so she's made something from this particular design uh, so if you have a little look uh, she sent in these are some little stars that she made from that tutorial uh, she said I followed your demo I went off to my stash found the, some of the beads that I have um, and she said this is what she came up with so she followed it and it looks like she's made exactly my little tutorial there so great work there to Liz that looks fantastic as well um, she said I've been wondering what I could do with my check weight triangles thank you for your wonderfully clever tutorial I'm glad you like that one so thank you Liz um, Liz has also sent us she's put it onto. she went a little mad and made quite a few st uh, the stars and she's put them on a really lovely peyote stitch bracelet that she's made there almost as little buttons so they're super cute great work there to Liz that's the the next step that she's done with that little triangle bead design um, Sandra McKinley 
from Knoxville, Tennessee. She said more improvisation on the constellation pattern. So the constellation kit, that's what the, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg was. Uh, that's this one just here. That was the inspiration of that one. So she's used the inspiration on that tutorial to make these beautiful bracelets just here. She got clearly got very, very creative and had a go with that. And she's made these two beautiful bracelets uh, based on that constellation pattern, which don't forget, if you want to get the constellation pattern, uh, the any three of them, they're 20% off. And you also get that Ruth Bader Ginsburg inspired collar um, included as well. So those are all of those pictures sent in. Um, well, let's see, there we go. So there's Sandra's there. So great job there to Sandra. Sheesh, who was watching earlier, I've seen that she's on as well. Um, after seeing Matthew create his starburst bracelet, I just had to make these star earrings. Um, she's used 15s, 11s, 8 seed beads, a 14 mil Swarovski crystal. Uh, Rivoli, thank you guys. I had a blast creating these. So that one is based off of my starburst um, starburst design, which I did that tutorial, I think that was about two weeks ago. Great job there, Tashis. That looks fantastic. Beautiful color choices and uh, a lovely Swarovski 14 mil, which uh, is in there as well. Wayne Wiley, he's been very busy. Uh, he sent in four pictures. So she, uh, he said he finally had time to watch Jermaine's Kumahimu tutorial, which if you haven't seen that before, if I, uh, do you know what, I'll show you on the, the Bead Spider website real quick. Uh, we have a whole library of tutorials. So from the Bead Spider homepage, anywhere in this little menu, if you're on desktop, it's right there. If you're on mobile, it's equally as easy. There's three little lines up in the, the top corner, around about here somewhere. Um, on mobile, uh, that will take you to the menu. Kits and tutorials, video tutorials, and that will take you to our video tutorial library. So you can see here's today's one, Ruth Bader Ginsburg necklace, which was on Saturday, the triangles, that starburst in, uh, video, the beaded dress, that was a very popular video, um, flat kumihimo, as, as Wayne was talking about, there's some fringe earrings, load more, shall we? And then you just keep, they just keep coming. They just keep coming. Beautiful beaded lavender there as well. Times Square ne uh, bracelet using dagger beads. Uh, a, a, a gemstone cuff making beaded clasps. Lots and lots of different tutorials that we have. And then if you come down here to the techniques section, uh, there's beaded flowers techniques, um, twisted kumihimo technique, uh, lots of bead weaving techniques as well. So tubular netting. Uh, how to do flat netting stitch, how to zip up peyote, how to do tubular peyote, herringbone stitch, lots and lots of different ones. And then again, you can load more. But yeah, that's our video tutorial library, which um, that's what Wayne was talking about when he said he watched Jermaine's Kumihimo video. Uh, that's on the, the, the video tutorial section there. Uh, let's see. So he said, I have attached very few examples of Kumihimo. Um that he did several years ago. I really love Kumihimo and need to get back into it once I can get rid of some of my bead stash. Does anyone ever do anything that decreases the size of their bead stash? I don't think they do. I don't really don't think they do. But Wayne has also sent us this. This looks absolutely gorgeous. I've used both the foam disc and the mirror die. So the Japanese mirror die for doing Kumihimo, they're really fun. Um, I was fortunate to attend the International Conference in Washington State several years ago for Kumihimo. Um, it's almost zen-like, he says, and certainly calming. Something that would certainly come handy in these days, I bet. Well, those look absolutely gorgeous there, Wayne. Um, it looks like he's been doing some lots and lots of different things. Is that Kumihimo as well, or is that a flat one on the right? Can't quite tell. But that looks like it's fantastic as well. Ah, he had a go at Mum's Constellation necklace. Great fun. Maybe now I'm brave enough to try the Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar. Great job there to Wayne. That looks absolutely fantastic. Beautiful color choices as well. And it looks like he's made his little strap there at the back with a, I would say, twisted herringbone, or maybe it's just herringbone stitch. I'm not sure. Sort of cubic herringbone. Um, and he's also sent us one that he's made with some of our 
triangle beads as well. So he had a real, ch they had a real charm. They add a real charm to any design. Here I use two different colors. So Wayne's been very creative with this little design. Um, looks fantastic there, Wayne. And I think that's everybody for today. So don't forget, just very, very quickly, if you want to be featured on tomorrow's show, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk and I'll try and get you on the show uh, just like all of those people just then. Um, but yeah, so don't forget, I will be back tomorrow. Same time tomorrow. Don't miss out. Um, click the link up in the description that says subscribe for more tutorials and things. We do also give away a £5 pattern if you are joining up for the very £5 worth of patterns. Um, so, for example, if you wanted to buy today's pattern, uh, if you're new and you want to get the, the pattern for how to make these, um, if you subscribe to that little pattern, um, to, to our little email list up there, you will get a fiver off. So you'll get it for just £2.50. So that's a, a great way to get a little bit cheaper if you want to. Um, but yeah, you'll also find out when we're doing more tutorials because we do lives all the time. Lots and lots of interesting things coming up. Um, but yeah, tomorrow I will be back and I will be assembling my little scarf. Uh, don't forget, lastly, I'll just tell you, the, the, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg slash Constellation kit, uh, that's on sale till Sunday night. The, um, the Triangles kit, much like what Wayne's been playing with, that's also on sale until Sunday night. And then um, lastly, the, these ones, which I'm doing today, they're going to be on sale for the next week. So you'll have a week to get those if you if you watch the tutorial and you go, that's fantastic, I want to get three for 30, um, or you can do that uh, for the next week. But yeah, 1 p.m. UK time, which if you have a little look on the Bead Spider Facebook page, it should have a little countdown timer saying, actually, if I look on YouTube, it will tell me. Um, but yeah, the, the little countdown there shall tell you that it's going to be in about... 22 hours from now, so uh, 21 and a half hours from now. Uh, but yeah, so thank you very, very much for watching. Um, I'll just show you one last time Andrew's beautiful footage of the design. Just before I say goodbye, I'll see who's saying goodbye. Um, Martine says, thanks, I'll see you tomorrow. Charlotte says, beating is my personal form of meditation. Colin Cruz says, see you tomorrow. Um, Lurdus, thanks for the tutorial, Matthew. I think I'm going to get this kit as I wear a lot of scarves. Great, I'm happy about that one. I can see a lot of people are actually on the website right now. Now that the tutorial's over, you're all heading onto the website to, to get that kit real quickly. So make sure you jump on and try not to miss out in case any of the colors sell out. Um, but yeah, let's see. Uh, Kay and Elaine is still here as well. But yeah, beautifully made, Matthew said Elaine. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I will see you all tomorrow, same time, for the assembly part of this tutorial. So have a lovely day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.